Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. I'm here at the DARPA Robotics Challenge in Pomona, California. And I'm here with uh, Team Thor. You guys are from, well, it's a UCLA Penn team, but I mean, Steven and SJ, and you guys have, have built this robot. It's uh, incredible. How do you start building a vertical robot for the DARPA Challenge? Sure, so you can't just wake up one day and say, I want to build a humanoid robot. It takes many years of practice. And so we've had many years of practice building robots for the RoboCup competition, kid size, teen size, and we use this robot in the adult size league. So, so with a robot like this, first off, we should probably walk through what the DARPA challenge is. Um, how does the competition work, and what's the course that you got, your robots have to go through? You know, what are the challenges that they face along the way? So the idea is that you want to have a robot that can be rapidly deployed in a disaster scenario. You don't want a human going in and dealing with radioactive waste. You don't want them going into a building where you don't know which floor is safe to go on. You'd rather send a robot. If you lose you know, a few hundred thousand dollars on a robot, it's really not that big of a deal. If you lose a human, that's priceless. And so the idea for the DARPA Robotics Challenge is to set up some tasks that could be very similar to a disaster scenario. One of the tasks, for instance, the valve task, where the robot goes in, goes to the door, finds a valve, and turns the valve, um, was inspired by the Fukushima disaster. And the idea was that you wanted to turn off one of these valves in order to prevent any more uh, you know, carnage from happening. And so if you can do that in this scenario, there's a chance that you would be able to do that in a real disaster scenario. So, okay, so you have this obstacle course to go through. Um, basically, there's, what, eight or ten parts of the obstacle course, and you get one point for each progression? Yeah, so you start out in a car. If you drive the car through barriers across a line, you get a point. Then, if you get out of the car, you get a point. Then you have to open a door, go through the door, another point, etc. So then you have to close a valve, drill a wall, drill a hole in a wall. Um, you have to, there's a surprise test that you don't know about very far in advance. Okay. Then you have to cross some terrain, whether it's uh, filled with debris or if it has very uneven surfaces. And then finally you have to climb uh, stairs. So each one of those subtests is going to be worth one point each. So you know that there's going to be a valve, you can program that movement in, you just have to tell the robot where the valve is yep. basically? Yep. Yes, that's the case. So if you have some model or generic fit, you can take a look at your perception data. The human can either assist in saying, here's where the model is, um, you know, figure out what a motion plan would be that could accomplish it. Or you can tell the robot, find a valve, there's something going on. And how much of this came out of stuff like FIRST Robotics? And I said you had mentioned RoboCup, RoboCup before, but it, I mean, it seems like a lot of the people here started out building robots with, with some of the school leagues and, and applied that skill to building big robots for the Urban Challenge. I'm a product of FIRST Robotics, so Team 1168, uh, yeah, Fry Robot from Malvern Prep. So uh, I've been doing robotics, I guess, since freshman year of high school, and it actually uh, really helps a lot because when you have that competition scenario, um, you're not just doing, you know, some science in this textbook. You actually have to deliver um, something like a, something like a product. At the end of the day, everything has to function. It has to be very reliable. It is like a sports competition. You do have to practice. So our advisor, uh, Professor Dan Lee, is always telling us practice, practice, practice. Yeah. And he's right. If we didn't practice a lot of these things, like the door or the valve, there's no way we could support. Them. Fantastic, guys. Thank you all so much, and, and good luck in the competition tomorrow. Um, we will have more from DARPA's robotics challenge on testing. Thank you, guys.